Uh, just bringing you back for a bit of an update with the Mazak um, mission, I suppose you can still call it. Uh, then rebuilding the Mazak CNC load. Uh, as you can see, we've still got the, um, the spindle motor in front of us at the moment. I haven't done any cleaning it, as you can see on top there. Uh, the main thing was just to get it apart. Um, looking at the parts that need to be replaced, and obviously there's not a lot. There's not a lot to the electric motor. It's a it's a, a, a brushless motor. Um, there's a couple of the bearings there that I'm um, going to replace on the rover itself. The replacement sitting there already to go. Uh, it's the rotor. So this is the uh, pulley end of the rotor. So nothing too big deal to sort of do with electric motor. The the bearings could have been left. They weren't too bad, but. If I had to just put it back together with the uh, original bearings, you could pretty much guarantee within six months they'd fail. But if I left them in there, it'd probably last another six years. But that probably big, you know, brings up another point. Um, why don't you just leave it? Why don't you just leave it alone? But um, the whole point of the rebuild, I haven't sort of talked about it um, in previous videos, is just to give the um, machine a good freshen up and any um, serviceable items will be replaced uh, as far as bearings, seals, you know, anything like that that need to be replaced, um, guides and, and anything like that. that you know, there's obviously an aluminum, I won't be replacing the ball screws, but looking at replacing the linear slides, uh, but anything like that that's um, within reason that uh, needs to be replaced, even things that are not within reason to be replaced will be uh, getting replaced. And, and it sort of brings up a question, why bother buying an oil machine and fixing it up? But um, I did explain that a little bit of that in an earlier video. I won't sort of make it, go back into that too much in this video. I don't make it too long. But um, I'll just sort of show you sort of where I'm up to with it at the moment. It, the whole theory was behind of, of rebuilding this machine is uh, where I'm up to now is the way I approach it is uh, I want to see the me mechanical wise um, rebuild the machine to last at least another well, 20, 25 years, uh, probably beyond that for the amount of time I'll be using it anyway. I'll just take you a bit of a look inside, nothing too big deal, just your standard electric motor, brushless electric motor. It's like, as I say, it's still have a lot of cleaning to do, so it's a bit of a pain. Um, even with the covers on, there's still the chance of the debris getting in there anyway. You can see a little bit of rubbish sort of sitting in there, so I'll be cleaning this, uh, taking my time to clean this, and that's the whole thing at the moment, just get this ready to put back in. And the next thing to come up on the bench here will be the um, the spindle itself. Uh, looking at replacing the bearings in that, even though I did mention I won't be, they were fairly good, but I'll probably have a bit more of a look at those and maybe even take it to my um, Mazak dealer and have a bit more of a talk about um, replacing those bearings. But I'll bring you back on that one when I get to that and work out what I'm going to do. And I'll bring you back in a separate video for that one. Just bring you down to a couple of painted parts. It's got these sitting in the back of the machine, a bit of limited space in my workshop at the moment. I've got jobs on the go and Mazak on the go at the moment. So I've just got these sitting in the back of the machine at the moment. I've just got to sit on a piece of wood there. Um, this is the um, mount for the electric motor. So I've just come through and um, deglazed, uh, deglazed these and resprayed them in a semi gloss black. Uh, same thing with the foot mount, you will remember that had that paint missing off the side there from that second video, so same thing. Any of the larger parts will just be um, deglazing and repainting, so we'll see how well that's come up. It's just it's just a good tidy up. You know, those parts, you know, some parts if they need to be sandblasted, they will. Uh, I've got a couple of parts sitting in the wash at the moment uh, from the electric motor, the end covers that are sitting in the wash at the moment, so they're just in there getting a bath, and then I'll bring those back out and... Um, do whatever needs to be done to those and replacing the bearings and getting that motor back together. Uh, the Z-axis um, servo motor mount, as I've shown you in the second video. Uh, just getting parts ready, just going through my parts and working out parts that I need to uh, sandblast and repaint. Uh, the one over the back there is the Z-axis uh, um, ball screws bearing support. Uh, the box down the front here is the for the tailstock itself. So just getting anything that needs to be painted in the same colour ready. So while I've got paint in the gun, uh, I'd be able to paint everything all at one time. <coughs> uh, the it's sort of similar to your manual machine. Um, it's hydraulically driven uh, tailstock. You just drive it up into position, clamp it in position, and this box. What this does is this controls the. Uh, spindle itself, a la your sort of manual machines where you're just moving the tile stock into position and then you're just adjusting the uh, spindle in and out, but this is obviously hydraulically driven and you've got limit switches at each end there for minimum and maximum of travel and you just set your your little um, um, guide there to where, where how far you want to travel to so that just sets it up I won't be doing, obviously I won't really use that that much, that's more for shaft work or longer, you know, supporting <coughs> excuse me, longer work pieces but um, 
obviously not being a shaft uh, shaft place all I do do shafts on my manual machine but not in volume though whereas on the CNC obviously it's a volume machine but it's still handy for supporting you know, longer work you never know what could come up but um, obviously I'll be rebuilding all the um, rebuilding the uh, tail stock as well while I'm in there so seals and things like that because it's um, a hydraulic unit so yeah, there's a lot of seals and things like that to replace in there so whatever needs to be replaced will be getting replaced bringing out a couple of other parts while I was in the painting frame of mine and I had the weather working for me so I had, we've had a little bit of good weather lately so where the weather's been good I've been able to paint um, these are the z access um, slider covers these are in behind the turret itself so it's like a concertina type of um, slider cover they all overlap each other they have a bronze guide that sits on top there and they've got a felt wiper uh, these were originally painted by Mazak so I didn't sort of see too much problem of um, repainting them again they've been obviously cleaned, um, sandblasted, and then they've been zinc plated, and then uh, they have a two pack or two part uh, enamel over the top, which is a uh, especially formulated paint for uh, hard wearing surfaces. So it would be a lot better than what uh, Mazak would have had available back in the late 80s when this machine would have been designed, uh, being a 1990 model machine. So everything sort of stayed current from that design point. Um, so the paint will definitely um, be probably obviously paint. I won't say I won't use the word superior, but it will be obviously it'll last a lot longer than what they had available way back then. But I did look at replacing these um, panels. You can probably see on that shiny section there. You can see a bit of the etching, uh, etching in there from the coolant sitting under the covers. As I mentioned, the covers overlap each other, so they do get um, uh, moisture sitting underneath the cover. But it's just a matter of um, maintaining the machine and just keep an eye on things. It had a lot of crap in there, but obviously in production shops, they're not going to worry about the machine too much. They just get a quick clean and they're out of there. But if you look after any machine, you can obviously make it last a lot longer. But uh, I'll see how the covers go. As I say, I don't see if I see any problems. Um, to get them, I, I did weigh up the fact of getting them um, remade in um, stainless steel, but... Uh, the sheer cost of it, I, um, just giving you a rough idea, I didn't actually show the parts to anyone, but the guy I'd get to do my laser cut and folding work, I did sort of go for a bit of a rough description of what they uh, what they look like, and he was sort of throwing around figures of three to four hundred dollars a panel, you know, and that's without seeing them. So, and they are individual parts, so they would have to be um, CAD drawn uh, for the laser cut of the cut them. And then obviously folded in different um, configurations because they do have, even though they look fairly similar, they, um, they all are different sizes so they can slide over the top of each other. So it's probably have to put a bit of a limit on how much I'm prepared to spend on the machine as much as I love to rebuild this machine. So just working my way through these painted parts. Um, this is the, uh, the junction box on top of the motor. You can remember that from that other video, the second video. Uh, just giving the uh, inside that clean as I've already shown you, uh, sandblasted and repainted that. Just take out a couple of the other parts here. You'll recognise this one from the last video, which I showed you the sandblast video. So that one's been sandblasted and repainted in the semi gloss black. All the parts of it are all repainted in the semi gloss black. So all these small pieces I, I just sandblast. So you can sort of see the difference. Obviously, you, you've seen them prior, especially with this cover here. And obviously, the sandblast does an excellent job. I haven't had much of a chance to do all of the motor covers yet, unfortunately. I did get one done. Um, this is the, um, the cover over the outside of the spindle motor, so this is the top cover. So this is where the where that um, lifting lug sitting was sitting through, and you have the electrical uh, box sits in behind it. And that where we're looking through that hole was in through here, where we see all the actual dirty motor. So this has all been, as I say, sandblasted and repainted in a, a matte black as I've talked about before, just to help to try to radiate some of the heat away from the motor itself. And just to finish off the video, just so I bring you over and just show you the hydraulic tanks, probably the next job I've got to get into. You remember that I showed you in a previous video, so this is all needs to be cleaned up. I did think about sandblasting it and painting it myself, so I've cleaned, cleaned it all, but uh, probably looking at sending it to the uh, powder coat, so this will be um, sandblasted and repainted in, or oh, repowder coat, I should say, or be powder coat, not repowder coat. Um, be powder coated in a, um, a flat black same thing again just to help radiate that heat away the um, hydraulic oil does get hot from obviously being used but there is a, a uh, an oil cooler and a cooling fan that's mounted above this so all the working is obviously mounted above this the hydraulic pump and so on so it does have a fairly uh, reasonable size oil cooler and a fan to uh, cool the oil on on the return line 
But I just thought I'd show you that because it's part of the rebuild. So just trying to get things ready for down that working end of the machine and then I can get the um, the actual base back on the floor. So the main thing I've got to do is just get that spindle that spindle motor back in and then I can put the whole thing back on its feet for the first time in a fair few years now. But that'll probably do for this video. I'm going to make it this long, but I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one. And why I got you to uh, Easter Sunday today. I uh, wish you all the best for Easter. And I look forward to seeing you guys back on the next one. Okay, bye for now.